I am reading from the book of Philippians, chapter 3, and I am using as a text verse number 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, I love to read the epistles that Paul the Apostle has written. A man of God of his stature, and yet he has the humility of mind and heart to say, I have not apprehended. I like this. A lot of Christians today think they got it made. They have finally arrived. You will never arrive until you hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Can you shout Amen? You that are listening by means of radio, it will take me several days to finish this, but I'm going to finish this message tonight. And I want to stir your heart tonight, you as Christians. Whether you know it or not, we are in a race. We're not playing church. Just because you're in an upholstered pew in your church, this is not an easy way. We're in a conflict and we are in a battle. The devil is out to destroy you and he's out to keep you from making heaven your home. But he which hath begun a good work in you, he will perform it unto the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you shout praise the Lord with me? There's some things that I have noticed here in the life of the Apostle Paul that if I can get you to put these things together, I believe that you will be the winner in the race. Every one of us have a race to run. First of all, there was dissatisfaction in the life of Paul. There was devotion in his life. There was direction in his life. There was determination in his life. And there was discipline in his life. All five things, and I want to incorporate them into three particular segments on this broadcast. And I believe that if we are going to make it to our fullness, if we are going to apprehend the first thing that we have to have is the humbleness of heart that the Apostle Paul had and never be satisfied with the experience that you have. If you ever get satisfied with your experience, then you are backslidden. There's something out there that God has for you. Never get content with the experience that you have, but press your way on until you have God's best. Can you shout praise the Lord with me, somebody? Now the reason why, and this is the church. This is the picture of the church. Some people don't have any more today than they had 20 years ago. They testify the same old testimony. Thank the Lord I'm saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Plop. And they sit down. They say the same thing every time there's a testimony meeting. But I want you to know there's something out there that you have never possessed. Stop judging your experience with somebody else. This is the reason why you've never gotten any further. You say, I got what he got. I don't care what he got. He could be backslidden. And if he's backslidden, you're backslidden. You don't judge your life in light of somebody else's experience. You judge your life with the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God has something better for you if you're willing to pay the price for it. Can you raise your hands and shout amen with me, somebody? Hallelujah! Some people are content with salvation. I had a young man say to me, If I can make it in by the skin of my teeth, I'll be happy. I said, You ain't got no teeth, mister. I don't want to be able just to get in just by making it in some back door someplace. But when I make it in, I want the angels to stand at attention. I want them to know, here comes a man of God. I want them to know that I conquered the devil and put him where he belongs. Can you shout amen? God said, you shall tread upon scorpions and upon serpents. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. There's more to this than just being saved. God's got something for you. If you're willing to pay the price, you can have it. I made up my mind. I'm going to pay the price for it. If you want the best, you got to pay for it. Out in the world, they have an expression, you pay for what you get. 
Are you listening to me? Sometimes I want to stay in a motel, you know, and I said, well, we better stay, save some money. And when we get in there, I said, oh, Lord. You go to bed in one corner and wake up in the other corner. The roach has done carried the bed over. You know what I'm talking about? Can't even shave in the morning. They no water. You turn the spigot on. You pay for what you get. And I want you to know if you're just content to be saved, that's all the experience you have. But I want you to know God's got something ahead for you. If you're willing to pay the price, separate some company, get rid of some friends you ain't got no business having. God said come out from the world and be separated and touch not the unclean thing and then I will receive you unto myself. There's a place of sanctification for the people of God, but it's going to take a lonely walk. Shout yeah, somebody. Never be satisfied with the experience that you have. Some people are content with the good. But there's some people that said, I want something better. Hallelujah. When you want something better, that means you're going to have to separate yourself from some people. You're going to have to leave some friends behind. God's got something better for you. And when you get to the better... There's a restlessness in your own spirit. You're not content with the better because you're reading the Word and God has the best out there for you. Can you shout Amen? And finally, you found out that God's given you the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You can have what Jesus had. You can have what Paul had. You can have what Peter had. But you got to pay the price. you got to live a life of holiness. you got to let God walk in you and talk in you. And He said, I'll channel my power through you. You shall, be wit- you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in Judea and then all of Samaria and then to the uttermost part of the earth. Hallelujah! I'm talking about a God that puts something within your life that causes you to be dissatisfied. This man had a devotion from God in his heart that he was reaching ahead for something that nobody else had. That's what I want. Most of us are content just to have what the preacher has. I want to be like my pastor. That's wonderful. But I want to get something he's only been dreaming about. I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to get something from God that nobody else has. You can tell where some people go to church because they talk in tongues just like the pastor. Not only that, when they dance, they even got the same little step he got. They copy the preacher. If you want to copy somebody, copy Jesus. Are you listening to me, somebody? Hallelujah! Put some direction in your life and forget the past and reach out into the future. God has something for you out there that you have never possessed. I'm talking to you Baptists now. I'm talking to you Methodists, and I'm talking to you Episcopalians. You've been told the Holy Ghost isn't for today. You've been told that miracles don't happen today. And I come to tell you that devil is a liar. Forget the past. Forget everything that you have been taught. My Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same tomorrow. What Jesus did yesterday, He's doing today. But He's looking for a vessel that He can channel His power through. God uses men. God don't use organizations. God doesn't use an organization. God uses a man. God uses a woman. He wants to clean you up and sanctify you and pour the Holy Ghost power in your life so that He can channel signs and wonders and miracles through you. But you got to reach out there and grab it. It belongs to you. And don't let anybody keep you from it. Can you shout praise the Lord? Forget those things which are behind. Forget everything you were taught. Forget everything you were instructed. And get alone with the Word of God and reach out there. Everything God says in here you can have, it's yours. If you're willing to pay the price and reach out for it, you can have it. And He'll channel His power through your life. Can you raise your hands and shout praise the Lord with me somebody? I'm reading from Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 
It's not enough to be dissatisfied. It's not enough to have a devotion and direction to get God's best. But you have to have a determination. Now I'm getting to my text now. I press toward the mark. That word press in the Greek is translated, I follow after. I'm determined. I'm going to have it. I press towards the mark. I said I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark. What makes a winning athlete? A winning athlete doesn't learn how to win by watching movies. He doesn't learn by lectures. He doesn't learn by seminars. But do you know what makes a winning athlete? By getting in the game. And getting something within him that will motivate him. And be determined. Something that will press and make him press through and make sure he excels in what he's doing. Listen to me, beloved. If you're going to make a successful Christian, you've got to work at it. You're not going to be successful playing church, going to Sunday school, morning worship, evangelistic service, choir practice, Sunday school, morning worship, evangelistic, choir practice, prayer meeting. Don't take no pressing for that. I press toward the mark. A determination to win. I'm going to be a winner. I'm going to do it. Now here's where we run into trouble. It's not enough to have a determination, but some people think that I'm going to do it. If it's going to get done. The other group says I'm going to let God do it all. It's either one or the other. But you've got to learn how that the Christian runner knows that it's God that works in him and it's God that works through him. There was a time in my ministry when I thought I was doing it. Don't you all get mad at me now. I said I thought I was doing it. I'd lay hands on people, blind eyes would open, deaf ears would unstop, the lame would walk. I picked up a whole bushel basket full of eyeglasses, laid hands on thousands of people. When I got home, I couldn't pray. Too tired. I'd lay down in that bed and say, Good night, Lord. See you tomorrow. I'd go back to service, pray for more folks. People would still get healed. I said, Lord, look at that. I don't have to pray. Man, I'm somebody. You ain't nothing. Did it the second night. Went home soaking wet. Didn't even take my suit off, brother. I was so tired. I said, good night, Lord. See you. The... Didn't even get tomorrow out and I was sound asleep. Didn't have no time to pray. Had no time to study. No time to get along with God. Third night, God left me get by with it. Went home and went to bed again. This was in Chicago. I'll never forget it. Three o'clock in the morning, I was awakened out of a deep sleep with the brightest light I ever saw. Knocked me out of that bed. And I heard his voice. He said, Son, thank God he still called me son. <laughs> Whoo, was I happy about that. He didn't kick me out of the family. Thank God I was still his son, but I done messed up. Isn't that wonderful to know? He said, Son! You're spending too much time with the people and not enough time with me. I thank God for that intrusion a long time ago. Willing to justify myself, I said, Lord, that's what you called me for. You called me to be with the people. I have an obligation to the people that, minister, that I minister to. God said, true. You have an obligation to your wife, to your family. You have an obligation to the people that you minister to. But before you fulfill any of those obligations, you have an obligation to me. He said, remember, son, without me, you can do nothing. 
God knows how to reduce you. Without Him, you are nothing. Without Him, you are on your way to hell. But with Him, you are saved. With Him, you are sanctified. With Him, you are filled with the Holy Ghost. God not only wants to work in you, but He wants to work through you. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord with me, somebody. Hallelujah! Which brings me to the last point. Wish I had more time. Not only must we be dissatisfied and have a devotion and direction and a determination, but there has to be discipline. This is where we get the word disciple from. People don't want to be disciplined. Read it in this third chapter of Philippians. Nevertheless, whereunto, verse 16, we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Preachers, we got the same rules. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk as ye have us for an ensample. In other words, Paul saying, you got to obey the rules. Discipline yourself. I come from Pennsylvania where Jim Thorpe went to school, one of the greatest athletes that ever lived, an Indian. He played for the Carlisle Indians. I believe it was in the early 1900s when Jim Thorpe went to the Olympics in Sweden, Copenhagen or somewhere over in that area. And he won all of the events and excelled in everything and got all those medals. Nobody was honored. He was the hero of the Olympics. Then after he received all the honor, they stripped him of all his medals. Why? Because he didn't abide by the rules. Are you listening to me? They found out that he played a professional game of baseball and took some money for it. And he was stripped of his amateur status. And he lost all of his medals. You're getting awful quiet on me now. This is a race that we're running, preachers. Christian friend, this is a race that we're running, and we are all governed by the same rules. I'm not talking about the rules of the church, but I'm talking about the rules of the Word of God. God is looking for men and women who will be obedient unto His voice. There are preachers that are running the circuit today that are preaching in the evangelistic field who think they can get by with certain sins because they're working for God. But I want you to know what is sin for the laity is sin for the preacher. Are you listening to me? God said, come out from this world and be separate. I had a so-called preacher come to me and said, Shambach, you can take a drink. Everybody's drinking. I looked him right in the eye and said, you're a lying devil. Everybody ain't drinking. I'm not drinking. I'm in training. I'm running a race. I don't smoke. I don't drink. But I'm fasting and praying and waiting on God. And I'm going to win this race. I want to hear a well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of your Lord. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord with me somebody. It's training time. I said it's training time. It's time we discipline ourselves. It's time we become a disciple of Christ. We're not running a little rose garden tea room here. This is church. It's time to get up. It's time to march. It's time to work. It's time to fight the devil and put him where he belongs. It's time to let the devil know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Can you shout praise the Lord with me, somebody? In the Old Testament, Lot lost his reward. Samson lost his reward. Saul lost his reward. And Ananias and Sapphira, they lost their rewards. They carried them out of church dead because they thought they could do what others couldn't do. It's time to have revival and wait on God and let God.